Hey guys, good morning. I hope everyone's doing well. I got another little tidbit to share with you, another little model kit related to our beloved RMS Titanic. Today I'm going to show you the Airfix RMS Titanic, and this is 1700 scale. And this is actually the gift set. I'll show you that beautiful picture of her on the front. And it shows you that it comes with. The set includes six acrylic paints, two brushes, and one poly cement. And you can see the numbers of the paint. 54, 60, 170, 121, 165, and 186. And it has multicolored parts. So, this is the Airfix, and that's what the finished model will look like. Total length is, what is that, 385 millimeters so I love the front the depiction of the Titanic is just beautiful well they all are I'm really yet to see one model kit of the Titanic that doesn't have a cover where she looks absolutely brilliant so that's on the front 1700 scale Turn it over to the side, and you can see it's got the warnings. And let's see if it's got a date. You got the barcode. And I don't see a date. It shows you some of the information on the internet. And show you the ends. You've got the Airfix. This is kit number A50164A, and this is the 1700 scale. I'll show you the other side. It's upside down. All right. It shows you a finished model of the ship. Photograph 385 millimeters. Again, some information. Airfix.com, multicolored parts. Kit number A50164A, and it shows you some information about the ship. The RMS Titanic will go down in maritime history as not just the largest and most luxurious passenger ship afloat upon its launch in 1912, but also as the most infamous. Due to its now legendary maiden voyage, despite warnings given to it by other ships, the Titanic steamed into the side of an iceberg, the night of April 14, 1912. This tore a large hole in the side of the hull, overwhelming the ship's famed watertight compartments. As water poured in, the order was given to abandon ship, with women and children being prioritized over the men. Of the 2,224 passengers on board, just 711 survived, with the vast majority being women and children of the first and second class. Today, more than 100 years after its maiden voyage and sinking, the legend of the Titanic continues to capture the imagination of the world. Built by Harlan and Wolfe in Belfast, Northern Ireland, and launched on May 31, 1911, the Royal Mail Steamship Titanic was one of three. The Olympic-class passenger ships built for the White Star Line, the largest, most luxuriant passenger ship ever built at the time. Titanic sailed on her maiden voyage from Southampton to New York on the 10th of April, 1912. Captioned, captained by Edward J. Smith, Titanic left Southampton, setting course across the Atlantic for New York, with over 2,000 people on board. The passengers ranged from the poorest immigrants traveling steerage, which is third class, to the rich and famous such as John Jacob Astor and his wife, Madeline, Madeline Force Astor, millionaires Margaret Brown Molly, the White Star Line's managing director, J. Bruce Ismay, and the ship's builder, Thomas Andrews. This model of the famous and tragically doomed Titanic comes in pre-colored plastic, making it suitable for both beginners as well as advanced modelers of all ages. And as you can see, there's nothing on the back. And mine didn't come in shrink wrap, um, just the uh, tape. 
sealing it shut. So that's a look at the outside of the box, my friends. Let's take it over to the desk and we'll open it up. Okay, so I got the camera set up and because it's wrapped, it's got tape on it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to open the box. Let's put that over there so you can see. How's that look? Looking pretty good? All right. All right, so let's put the first thing I notice is the glue, poly cement. Oh, he's <laughs> slippery little sucker. And that should be more than enough to do the entire ship. That always comes in handy. And I see one of the paintbrushes. Nice and fine. This will help with the good uh, the detail areas. Um, let's see, is there another paintbrush? I said it came with two. I don't see one offhand. We've got the paints. It showed on the, the cover of the box, it showed that it came with six. So let's go ahead and show you. You've got 121 and the way that looks it would be for the decks. The deck plating or the planking. And we have number 54. It looks like dark brown. So maybe this could be for the masts maybe. Maybe the lifeboats. Um, I don't know what else the dark brown could be for. Let's see, we've got another kind of brown. This one is 186. And again, it's brown, darker brown. Again, I'm thinking, I don't know, the deck, the deck planks would be this color. So we'll see on the instruction sheets. By the way, I'll put up all the instructions for you guys. Just in case some of you out there had bought this kit and uh, maybe it didn't have the instructions or maybe you're thinking about getting the kit and you want to see the instruction sheet because that does help so I'll put it up for you as I go along the next paint is numbered 70 and it's more of a, a lighter brown color now we come to number 61 and this is kind of like in I don't know like an orangey tan beige i'm thinking that this is for the funnels the smokestacks and we got one color of paint one left is 165 and it looks like it's a, a light gray maybe this is for like the crow's nest and the lifeboat covers like i said we'll find out in the instructions so what else do we got you see right off the bat we got the hull. And this is not a snap together kit, so but uh, I'll show you like the other one that I had shown you, my other 1700, I believe it was Academy. It also came colored and you were able to take apart the hull. You can see the bottom. You can see the plating. I hope the camera picks it up because it is really nice. It's nicely detailed. You can see the bilge keel. I'll show you the back. You can see where the, the rudder and where the other propeller would go. Looking at above the water line, you can see that they had opened up all the portholes, so that's nice. You don't have to drill it. I'll try to get it where you can see inside. That's a good shot. You can see all of the holes are open. So you, if you want to light the ship, 
you'll be able to very nicely. Um, are they? They're all the same size, um, but they're drilled, so there's not much you can do about it. Because you know, when you do the drilling for the sides of the holes, what you want to do is you want to make the larger ones on top, and then kind of make them smaller as you go down. That way, there it doesn't look like a like a toy where it has all the same holes sizes for the um, portholes. But that's a good shot. Showing you that they're all ready to be lit. That's really nice. Now you don't have to paint. Um, <clears throat> I myself, when I would make it, I would paint it. Um, prime it, paint it. And the ship itself, the um, you would do the flat. You wouldn't do the shiny. I got a problem with that because I love the Rust-Oleum. And I do all my Enterprise ships in the Rust-Oleum White, and it's nice and shiny, and it makes like a really good shell. I absolutely love that paint. And I'm going to check to see if they make a dull coat. So when I do my Trumpeter Titanic, I'll be able to spray and use the same paint, but use the, the flat. I would like it shiny. I love shiny, but I know that that wouldn't be accurate. You can see where the anchors go and the rear so let me put it back together and I'll show you guys the kit the hull again you don't have to paint it if you choose not to because it's already pretty much done for you it's got the the areas where if you had wanted to you could run wires and put it into the base for the switch you can see the her front. Again, the, the the pieces are clean. You don't have to clean up any. You don't have to drill anymore. You don't have to sand to file them down because they look really nice. So let me show you the superstructure. And you can see this would be, uh, let's see, the inside with a promenade deck. But if you're going to light it, I suggest that you would paint this just for the light block. So let me put this back on the model. I'll put it back on the hull. And I'll show you guys what it looks like. It kind of clicks in, um, but it's not a snap together kit. So just so you guys are aware of that. And they give you the glue anyway. So, But look at, again, you can see the holes in the portholes really nice so this would be beautiful to light I would use a nice LED tape so that's the hull let me put that where you guys can still see it what else do we have we have um, let's see this looks like the rudder uh, excuse me the propellers and right off the bat I noticed that this kit gives you three you know there are some model kits that give you the option of four the middle propeller uh, excuse me the middle propeller with either three or four fan blades but this one has three three propellers and the middle one will be four and I showed you the Academy one, and this is almost identical to that, the 1700. You can see the funnels are one piece. They're actually molded in one piece, so they're very nice. Now I showed you the Academy 1700 scale Titanic model, and that came with the uh, LED lights. And I tell you, this is almost identical to that. If you want to check that out, I will put the link in the description if you want to see it. And you can, the side-by-side -side comparison, they, they're identical. So, the brown parts, you've got the mast. And I think, I think this would be the forward mast where the crow's deck would go on. The crow's nest. And what are these? It looks like... 
I'm not quite sure what they could be. Maybe the tops of the lifeboats. I think. I'll put up pictures, and the pictures will show you more detail of each part. So, oh, I found the other paintbrush. And this one has got a thinner end for more detailed work. I'll show you side by side. So that's really nice. Now, I've seen reviews online, and they say, oh, it comes with a cheap brush, and... You know, when I do my reviews of my models, I don't really complain or pick out faults for my things because I love the Titanic, and I'm always going to stay positive. Um, I'm not going to say they're cheap brushes. I think they're nice enough to give you brushes in the kit. This will be good detail work. You know, like when you do the tops of the, the lifeboats or the crow's nest, things like that, this will be, um, be very useful. And you've got the glue. So that's a plus plus right there. So the next one, up oh, we got the base. You can see the base. It'll probably look better in photographs. And you can see they do the propellers again in black in case you want to change the color. You can see where the propeller shafts will come from, from the back bottom of the ship. And over here you have the smokestacks, the tops. And you've got the rat lines. Now again, if I'm wrong, can you t tell me in the description or the comments below? I know the, um, <laughs> the pirate ships have rat lines, but I'm not sure if that's what it's called on every ship. And it could either be the rat lines or the, the ladders going up the side of the smokestack because you can see the ones that kind of come to a point uh, for the masts and the ones that are rectangular in shape probably go on the smokestacks so you got a nice base again this base is just about identical to the base that was in the Academy version I wonder if deep down they're the same company Airfix and Academy or they just happen to have bought the molds, or they're using the same molds, or I wonder how that works. So when you flip it over, you've got the decking, you've got the bow, and they're upside down. And you've got the stern, and you've got the top, and the promenade decks would be just below this, the way it would fit. So it would go on top, like I said, the promenade decks, you'd be able to, I don't know, you might want to paint this. That's probably what the paint is for, to make it match. You can see the detail where the funnels will go, and the, um, the A deck, B deck, or the boat deck, actually. So that's that piece, and what do we got next? Next we have, well, there's a lot of pieces on this. You can see it's got the bridge, the wheelhouse, and you can see some of the, the walls for a deck. The, mold, the molding is very nice. So this will make a very nice ship. They're nice and clean. You can see the rails. I think those are rails. But you can see how clean they are. You don't have to clean up any flash off it at all. You can see the, um, all the little lifeboats. Again, look at the detail on the walls for the top decks. I hope the camera can pick that up. If not in the video, maybe on the photographs, because I'll put up photos as I go along, like I usually do for you guys. So that's really nice pretty. Well, it's a Titanic. Of course she's pretty. On, the bar, on this side, you flip it over, you can see the compass tower. Now, if you're thinking the compass tower needs to be cleaned up, that's actually made that way on purpose, because I can see where they were going with the handrails. Um, let's see, is it just two parts? I think it's just two parts. But you can see where the, the steps would come together on the inside. I hope the camera will pick that up when I put the pictures up. You can see the anchor crane 
right there for the mast. And you got some beautiful windows. Gorgeous, isn't it? The, the Titanic was such a beautiful ship. As I am so excited to start my Trumpeter 1-200 scale Titanic because they got the photo etch pieces that actually go and they've got the, the, the circle, the half circle on top and it's just amazing. Actually, every I've done, let's see, I think this is the seventh Titanic model kit that I've shown you guys and I've got a few more that I have. Um, I'm yet to see a real crappy Titanic kit. I think they all did a great job, and they're all beautiful. I think they're all beautiful, because I think the Titanic is absolutely gorgeous. You can see the handrails for the stern, and I think this is the handrails for the bow. You can see where the, um, I think that would be for the forward with a grand staircase, the forward grand staircase. It could be the aft, I'm not sure, but I think it would be the forward. You can see the skylights. And what are these little guys? Um, I'm not sure what those are. Let's see, they look different on the other side. Oh, I couldn't tell you what that is. But that's basically the white section, the white plastic, this is basically it. You've got four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. You've got six, actually, rows of lifeboats. And what I would do, what I like to do with mine, is you can put p bits of string from the end and put it down and glue it in place onto the boat. That way there it looks like they're hanging. And over here, you can see my thing right there the anchors are cute little anchors and for the white section the white plastic again this is a really small piece you really want to be careful that's for the the flag that goes at the uh, the rear of the ship aft and you've got the little the little vents so you got to be careful taking those off too so the white section, the molded white plastic, is basically the um, the handrails, the sides of the ship. You got the lifeboats, and you've got the the walls for the promenade deck, for A deck, B deck, and the brown or the tan is the deck plating themselves, the deck planks. The black would be for the rat lines, um, propellers, and the base. And then you've got the brown for the mass, and you have the gold for the propellers, and you have the pretty smokestacks that are actually molded complete, so you don't have to glue them together. No seam lines. And like I said, if you choose not to paint, then it, they did a pretty good job, because, you know, sometimes when it's pre-painted, where the propellers come out, the two side propellers, I'm sorry about that. The two side propellers you usually have to paint because they could be molded in a different color, but these are molded in black, so it actually works. So that's the white parts. Moving down, let's see. We have the decals. Let me show you guys the decal sheet. Again, my big clumsy fingers, it'll probably look better when I do the photograph for you. I don't know if this is going to focus. 1 700th RMS Titanic. Titanic out of Liverpool. And you've got the letters that go on the side of the ship. You've got the United States flag. You've got the British flag. And you've got the white star pennant. What else? That brings us to the instructions. And like what I like to do for you guys is I like to put up the entire instruction sheet. Some people just kind of say, hey, look, here are the instructions, and that's it. Well, what I like to do 
is actually put them up for you guys if you want to pause it and I like to make them clear enough where you can actually use them if you need to so on the front you can see Titanic gift set and what it says there's a little bit more information on this so because it starts off with the same information that was on the side of the box but I like to give you guys all the information possible the RMS Titanic has its place in maritime history. It's not just the largest and most luxurious passenger ship afloat upon its launch in 1912, but also as the most infamous, due to its now legendary maiden voyage. Built at a Harlan and Wolf shipyard in Belfast, the Titanic was commissioned by White Star Line to be a direct competitor with the newest and most luxurious Atlantic liners. Designed to be unsinkable, with a number of watertight compartments along the length of her hull. Construction of the Titanic was not without its difficulties. Work had to be delayed due to its repairs being undertaken on her sister ship, the Olympic, necessitating parts from the Titanic being transferred over to the other liner. The Titanic was designed to herald a new era in cross-Atlantic travel. With previously unheard of luxuries available for the first time, first class passengers, they had access to various baths, a swimming pool, gymnasium, squash court, and even a barber shop was aboard the vessel for its maiden voyage in April of 1912. The cost of the first class ticket was 875, I believe that's quid, one way, or 64,000 quid in today's money. I don't know what that what that symbol is. The, the Titanic departed Southampton on the 10th of April 1912, captained by the experienced Edward J. Smith. She stopped first at Cherbourg, France, then Cobe, Ireland, picked up further supplies and passengers before then making her way out into the Atlantic on her main vo maiden voyage to New York. The first part of the journey was uneventful, but this was to change. At 11.40 p.m. on the night of 14th of April, two lookouts spotted a large iceberg directly ahead of the ship, and despite the frantic orders to change course, the liner was not able to react. And just 30 seconds later, the iceberg tore a gash in the starboard hull of the ship. This in turn popped rivets along the length of the hull, hastening the filling of water tight compartments. Water rapidly filled the hull and the vessel was doomed. It became rapidly apparent to the officers on board that there was no chance of saving the ship. And at 12.45 a.m., the first of the lifeboats began to be lowered into the water. However, the first boats left barely filled as the passengers on board believed the ship to be unsinkable took some persuasion to abandon the, abandon the large liner and head for the small wooden lifeboats. By 2 o'clock a.m., the fact that Titanic was sinking became apparent to all. The stern had risen clean out of the water, exposing the propellers, and shortly afterwards, the water reached the boat deck. The remaining passengers clung desperately onto the top of the stern to prevent themselves from falling into the icy waters. But at 2.20 a.m., the bow and stern separated, with the bow sinking first and the stern following shortly afterwards. Of the 2,224 people aboard the ship, 711 survived, and due to the orders given on deck that they should be the first to leave, the vast majority of these people... The vast majority of these were first and second class women and children. Just 75 of the 462 third class male passengers survived the sinking, with many families losing their sole breadwinner. There was a large charity drive for the survivors in the aftermath of the sinking. Much criticism of the White Star Line followed the sinking, as it transpired that there were not enough lifeboats for all the passengers but the Titanic had compiled with all the laws of the period at the time. That dictated the number of lifeboats based on tonnage rather than passenger number. 
The wreck of the Titanic was found by Dr. Ballard in 1985, and now Titanic continues to hold the imagination of the world. The length is 261.9 meters. The height is 53.3 meters. The beam is 28 meters, has nine decks, and a speed of 21 knots. Capacity of passengers and crew is 3,547 people. And that's what's on the front. Now, it gives you that same information in all kinds of different languages. And then it goes down to the beginning of the assembly instructions in English. And if you want, you can pause the video. And the photographs that I put up hopefully will be good enough where you can read it. You've got the contents. And there's a lot of different languages for that. <clears throat> And finally, when you get to page six, you see the parts diagram. And I had shown you guys all the parts. So this kit, everything is present. So when you get to part seven or page seven, that's where you actually see step one. And you can see that's the bow, the anchor crane, all the things getting it set. Um, part two. The, the assembly of the cranes and the walls for what I believe would be B-deck. And then part three, you've got the mast and the rat lines that go on. Part four, part five, more of the walls go on. Part five is the, the rear observation deck. You can see where the vent placement go and more of the, uh, the rear deck. And what I'll do is I'll put up pictures, and if you're interested or you want to see more or more detail, just pause the video, because I'm going to put it up in high definition so you guys can see the instructions. Because I like to look at that when, when I'm looking at a model that I want to get. I like looking at the instruction sheet, seeing what it entails, difficulty levels, the amount of detail. Part 12, you got the lights. Uh, not the lights, you've got the more of the walls. And if I were to light this kit, I would prime so you would have less light block. Actually, more light blocking, excuse me. You got the cargo hatch. Part 13, you've got the, uh, the assembly of A deck and the compass tower. You got the grand staircase, um, the glass ceiling, kind of like a greenhouse. I know obviously it's not a greenhouse, but I don't know the, the particular name for it. Um, if you guys do, you can put it in the, the comments. I bet you Commodore Urban knows that part, what it's really called, the part at the top of the grand staircase, because he knows a lot about ships. That guy's got a phenomenal knowledge of ocean liners, and particularly the SS United States. So, Commodore Urban, Alan, hey buddy, if you're watching, what are these called? You know the part that have the glass in the frame that lets the light in for the staircases. Moving on to page 10, we start the formation of the smoke funnels. And again, everything is in one piece, so you don't have to worry about um, the seam lines, sanding them down and puttying them. The attachment of the smokestacks, putting it on to the superstructure. You see the lower hull? That would be the time where if you want to prime it to light block it, so if you're going to light the ship. You can see the propellers are going on. And then you part 24. It's the formation of the bow, the rails, and you're putting the anchors in, and you do the same thing for the, the rear observation deck. And then, as you near completion, page 11 shows you the superstructure and adding them all to the hull. And then you start putting on the little detail, the front of the wheelhouse, on the bridge, um, the roofs on the observation rear, um, port and starboard and you've got the uh, the mast the rat lines and you've got the 
Um, this is the rear, right? Yeah, this is the aft cargo cranes. And you see the formation of the base right there. And finally, the ship's completion. Now, it even has what it looks like the same picture for putting on the decals as the Academy um, Titanic did. That's why I'm wondering if they're, if they're sister companies. Because, you know, in this day and age with uh, copyright and all that stuff, how they could actually put the same picture up is um, interesting. And on the back, you've got the painting guide. So all these pictures, these pictures represent all the paint needed. Um, and it shows you the paint and the corresponding, let me show you. For instance, number 54. Number 54 is gold. See, the camera won't pick it up because it doesn't really look gold. But obviously the gold would be for the little strip that you would do just where the white and the black are on the ship. 61 would be the matte, matte flesh. So that would be, let's see, I had thought that that would be for the decks. And you've got 70, which is the brick red. 121 would be the matte pale stone and the gray would be satin gray would be number 165 and the brown 186 and it's nice that uh, they give you the paint as well and you can see the hornby hobbies and i'm yet to see a date on this because i like to give you guys as much information as possible and usually the dates would be on the bottom I haven't seen a date so far. I didn't see one on the box either. But what I'll do is eventually I will find the date and I'll put it up in the the title when it first comes on or or I'll put it in the description. But I will put a description of the the Academy 1700 Titanic for you guys to compare with. And the completion of the instructions, that's everything that's in the box. You can see the the empty box is packaged nicely to ensure its safety. And that, my friends, is the Airfix 1700 RMS Titanic model kit. Again, this is the gift set. Um, I love how it comes with the paint and the glue. Now, what I would do, I would prefer to use the uh, paint gun as opposed to the brushes because you've got to be really good with a brush for it to look good. And again, I go to Commodore Urban because he's working on the SS United States. And he's just, he does a phen phenomenal job and he uses brushes. The funnels that he did, he said in one of the videos, he put like 10 coats of the paint onto the funnels, the tops. And they look, they look amazing. Um, he put, by brush, he did the decks of the SS United States and they're green and just the amount of time that he put in and there's no brush marks and you know how sometimes when you paint with a brush it looks crappy well his models came out really nice and the one he's working on now the SS United States is I believe it's a 1570 scale so um, it probably this is 1700 so it's probably maybe add six more inches on if I'm right to this you can see where you would be painting the detail on the decks, the green that he does, and it's just amazing. Um, I recently got the, the um, well, the SS United States has an interesting history. Originally, it was released by Ideal, and I've showed you guys that one. And recently, I got the re-release by Glencoe. And when I get that, and I'm going to be showing you guys that video because I really don't want to make the one from Ideal because it was in the 50s and Alan had, Commodore Urban, he had told me that everything that came with the kit was unique and it, it was absolutely original to the kit and I loved it because it had come with uh, tissue paper and I was wondering if they had done that for shipping but anyway, I don't want to build that one just because of the, the age so I had gotten the Glencoe one 
to try to um, to make one because I do want to make one. I've also got a Ravel. I've showed you guys the Ravel, and I know I'm rambling off the subject, but um, when those come in, I'm going to make videos and I'm going to share those with you guys as well. But this is for the Titanic. This is the Airfix Titanic 1700 scale. And again, I'm just amazed how much it looks like the, the Academy 1700. And I'll put that link in the bottom if you want. After you watch this video, you can go check that out. And as usual, thank you so much for watching. And until the next video, I'll see you very, very soon. Thank you for watching.